my team was super excited when we got the call uh, and they asked for, you know, exhibiting CRISPR chip in a museum in Germany. Well, it's not very common for scientists or academics to have their technology featured in a museum. So uh, for me to see my technology being showcased next to the DNA model that was, you know, uh, discovered by Watson and Crick, it's a... Uh, it's a proud moment, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy uh, to be a part of it. The most complex technology that exists, I think, it's biology. Biology is such a complex system and has all of these fascinating enzymes. Each of them are doing a function in a very rapid manner. And if we can capture these amazing functions with human-made technologies that can, can really expand our capabilities. CRISPR is one of these enzymes that can detect sequences in our genome. And uh, there are other enzymes that each can do other fascinating things. And I hope to see a future where can, we can really capture their function and use biology as technology. We had the impression that after a long time um, genetics is manifesting itself in social debates and media uh, much more in the last years because of new developments in um, technologies in genome editing and in sequencing and um, therefore it um, is possible to grasp a new um, picture about genetics in society right now. So the way today we detect genetic diseases, it's, um, it's a long process. It requires a lot of instrumentation. It takes days to actually detect genetic diseases. And uh, there's a lot of effort in like, you know, um, uh, reducing the time, but that's still costly. Um, we have to really think about, you know, developing technologies that overcomes those limitations and uh, um, really provide global access to these technologies. And CRISPR chip is an example of that because CRISPR chip is able to do uh, genotyping in a matter of minutes and using uh, electronic technologies that is very scalable, it can be very cheap and it, it can be really you know, used anywhere in the world. And you know, when you think about it, this is how we give global access to powerful you know, invention like um, genotyping, genetic disease testing, and uh, you know, identifying um, you know ways to actually treat those diseases with other technologies such as you know gene editing and CRISPR technology. We were very interested um, uh, in the development that uh, CRISPR cars can be used not only for gene editing but also for um, searching, for, for being a gene uh, for a search motor for finding certain combinations in genes. So um, that was very interesting for us and we uh, have integrated it in this way. What makes me really happy is that CRISPR chip can not only be used in, in um, detection of genetic diseases or in agriculture or in liquid biopsy, but also it could, the same exact technology could be used for uh, CRISPR quality control. There's a lot of emphasis on improving the quality uh, and bringing a standard to CRISPR-based gene editing. That requires us um, to understand how the CRISPR is actually functioning in a specific patient. And uh, it requires us to design, to understand our design and to be able to really predict the outcome of our design. And this can be done with, uh, with CRISPR chip. In CRISPR chip, uh, we can really um, look at how the enzyme functions in terms of you know, specific targets, uh, the kinetic of it, how fast it, it acts, and if it's efficient. And this will really help us um, in designing better CRISPR tools. And uh, the technology has now been used um, uh, for this uh, application, which makes me really happy. And we're collaborating with the uh, institute in the U.S., such as National Institute of Standard and Technology, to see if the technology can become a standard uh, to help uh, you know, scientists and, and um, uh, pharmaceuticals to, to basically design better CRISPR tools. The major thing that I really liked about the museum is, for me as a scientist, I, I just saw the power of imagination. 
you know, how people just imagined, um, imagined something uh, and uh, they went after it and they created um, uh, something or they discovered something. To me, the majority of discoveries were not about knowledge because knowledge is very limited. Knowledge creates boundary, but your imagination has no boundary. And if you're an artist, if, you're an, if you are a creator, which I think every scientist should be, then you draw on those imagination. Then you uh, take the risk on taking those imagination to, to become a technology. And this is what I saw in major uh, technological development over the last century in the museum.